Hi, it's Rod, and this one's called Trust in God, Not You. So God gave me a vision one time. It was like I was like at a crosswalk or something, and Jesus was like the crossing guard with a stop sign. And he was pointing at me saying, stop trying to trust in yourself. Stop trying to trust in yourself. Stop trying to trust in yourself. So I've been trying to learn from Jesus how to not trust in myself ever since that vision. And that was a long time ago. So I had a dream the other day. I'll try to explain that. So the dream was I was looking at a backyard. And I was thinking, I gotta cross that backyard to get to the other side. I really have to. There's, it's so important to do it. I'm looking in the yard. There's two dogs in the yard, and there's some sort of like a kid or a teenager or something in the yard. And I'm thinking, oh, I don't think they're gonna like me crossing through their yard. So the dream goes where I run as fast as. I can to try to get by the dogs and by this kid or something. I get by the dogs. I start running down the sidewalks. The kid's after me. And I just keep running block after block. The kid never gets up. He's on my tail the whole time. Finally, I get exhausted and stop. And I'm trying to explain to the kid. I wasn't trying to do any harm. I wasn't trying to do any harm. And I woke up from the dream and I thought, wow, that was a lot of fear or something like that. So I asked God about it. And he kind of gave me some revelation about it. This is the kind of revelation God gave me about trusting in him, not me or something. So it's sort of like... Uh, we're not supposed to be doing things by ourselves with our own wisdom or muscles or money or something. The problem is that we've been trained to trust in ourselves ever since we were kids, especially if our parents weren't Christian. The schools, the media, do it yourself. You don't need God or something. And people are walking around with fear and depression and anger all the time or something. Instead of peace, love, and joy, trusting in God with you. So that's a bad habit you gotta break. Trusting in yourself, not God. Trusting in Rod, not God. So, it's like Jesus came to me after the dream, and it's like me and Jesus are standing looking at the backyard, looking at the dangerous dogs, looking at the kid that looks like he doesn't want me walking through his yard. And Jesus is trying to say to me something like, You're not supposed to fear, Rod. You're not supposed to trust in yourself, Rod. You can look at scary situations that you may have to encounter. It could be a deadly plague. It could be a mean-looking dog or something. And you have to try to see Jesus with you? You have to try to believe he's with you? Jesus said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. It's only us that are choosing to believe he's not there, or Satan's trying to tell us, Jesus ain't there, believe it or something. If you don't, you're not going to sense the presence of God or hear his voice or trust in him to help you through things. We have to believe that Jesus is always with us. And it's sort of like, I'll try to explain this other vision I had. It's like I'm a little kid, and I'm with Father God, and I'm asking him the question, what's your best will for my life, Father? And he said, to get close to my presence through the blood of my son Jesus, to learn truth from me and try to teach truth to others, and to... Do whatever Jesus tells you to do with his power to do it. If you could just do those three things or four things, you'd be experiencing God's best will for your life. So the part about listen to what Jesus is telling you to do and do it. 
So in this other vision where me and Jesus are looking at the backyard and the dogs and stuff, the fearful backyard or something, Jesus is saying to me, if I want you to go through this backyard, I can make you invisible. I could cause the dogs to drop down and turn into dust or something. We're not supposed to be trying to do things ourselves, what we want to do with our power to do it and being afraid all the time. We're supposed to be listening to what Jesus is telling us to do. My sheep hear my voice. I don't want them to follow me. And trusting he'll help us to do what he asks us to do. It's like co-working with God or it's letting Jesus live through you to do his will out through you. It's not just you walking through the yard. It's Jesus, king of the universe, inside you walking through the yard. Who created the dogs and the kid and stuff like that? That's the way we have to see it. It's not just you facing a plague by yourself. It's you and Jesus facing the plague. And he controls it all. Co-working with Jesus. It's like saying, well, I don't want to do my will today. What do you want to do now? Jesus, best friend, king of the universe. Let him tell you. Rod, I want you to go to the dentist in the time of plague or something. Really, Jesus? I could get some plague at going to the dentist. Fear! Ooh, I fear the dentist. I fear the plague or something. Jesus said to me, if I tell you to go to the dentist, you're safe. It's like me trying to visit people that are sick or something, friends or family or something. If Jesus tells me to do it, I'm safe doing it. It's like uh, another vision I had one time. I'm in a boat with Jesus. There's an angel driving the boat. And I see some fire over by some wooded area or something. And I'm looking at it, and I'm saying, is that a forest fire? And I look closer, and it's a whole city on fire. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm kind of scared now. What happened here? And Jesus just turns to me in the boat and says, he points his finger at me, and he says, you're safe with me, you rod. It's like you're safe in the boat with Jesus. He could just say, stop fire, and it stops. He could say, allow the city to burn to the ground, and it can burn to the ground. You're not trusting in you. You're not trusting in the government or something. You're trusting in Jesus. If the government says you can't have any food or something, or you got to go to prison or something, Jesus can go with you. It's like the Joseph story. I'm sure he didn't want to live in slavery and prison and Egypt or something. I'm sure he didn't want his brothers to try to murder him. Same thing. But that's the way life turned out. And Joseph was saying, these people meant it as evil against me. God meant it for good. Joseph said, God has made me to forget about all my suffering here. It's a supernatural comfort. No matter what our problems are, His grace is sufficient for it. And that's the way we have to see it too. God could have just said, Joseph, I'm going to set you free from Egypt. He didn't say that. Or Daniel, I'm going to set you free from Babylon or something. God didn't do that. Even the people that went into Babylon slavery for 70 years, God said, this isn't for your harm. This is for your good. If God wanted to harm Israel, he would have wiped them off the planet or something like that, like the days of Noah or something. He allows us to live in this evil and suffering world, making free will choices, but he helps us to get through it. It's like he could be sending an angel of plague death to kill the firstborn in Egypt, but he could make a way to protect us from it, or he could protect Noah in an ark while he's drowning the wicked around him. So we may have to see a lot of judgment of the wicked in the future, people dropping dead and stuff like that. It's God's will. And uh, if we're not dead, it's God's will for us not to be dead. If other people, family members are dropping dead around me, it's their time. God's in control. The plagues aren't in control. God had this plague planned before I was born. 
God's been trying to prepare me for up until this time. <laughs> With faith in God, that's the only thing that's going to get you through it. Uh, people ask me, how are you preparing? Well, the most important thing to tell them is get a good relationship with God going. Whether you got masks or hand sanitizer or what. So I was getting a little fear thinking about going to the dentist. But I said, if Jesus tells me to go, I go. If he tells me not to go, I don't go. If he tells me to go visit somebody who's sick, like my mother or something like that, you go. And the God will protect you. If you get sick, he wants you to get sick. If he heals you, he heals you. He wants you to be healed. If you're dying from it, because it's your time to die, he'll help you through death like Psalm 23 or something. I won't fear anything. My good shepherd Jesus is with me. So he's trying to teach me these things about trusting in him, not me or something. Trust in God, not you. Then you can have some peace of mind. It's like when we try to trust in ourselves, it manifests itself in fearful emotions. If we're trusting in God, we got some peace. We got freedom from fear. And it's like we're in the spiritual war and Satan's always trying to get us to believe in lies. Lies like God's not real. God's not here. God's not in control. God doesn't love you. God won't forgive you of your sins, etc., etc., etc. And we got to fight Satan off in spiritual warfare. No, God is real. God is here. God does love me so much he gave a son for me. God controls it. So it's like you're co-working with Superman or Super God or something. You're not trying to do it yourself. You're trusting God's wisdom and muscles and money, not yours. Who cares what the government's up to? God can take good care of me like he took care of the Israel in the desert for 40 years if he has to miraculously. The harder things get, the more we can see the miracles of God helping us through it, like Moses at the Red Sea. Daniel in a lion's den. Shadrach in a fiery furnace. So this world is like a faith school. God's trying to see if we'll exercise our free will choice to believe in his truth and have faith in him or believe in Satan's lies and not have faith in God, sort of like Adam and Eve or something. Or the rich man going to hell. And we decide. We believe what his word says. We believe what his spirit's telling us. We can believe he's real. <laughs> He loves us. He forgives us. He's trying to help us through an evil and suffering world. It's like a motto I have. I gotta live in an evil and suffering world. But God can help me through it. Bring good out of it for me. Make me happy in it. And help me not to be bothered by it. It's like sometimes I get this vision of a whiteboard. Sort of like a blackboard. With stuff written on it. And it's Rod's sufferings or something. And I'm looking at it and I'm saying, how can God be good with this many sufferings on it? And like Satan's next to me saying, yeah, look at all the suffering, Rod. God can't be good with all these sufferings. Look at your back pain. Look at the plague coming. Look at the evil churches around you. And... Uh, it's like you have to see a vision of Jesus stepping forward, Satan running away or something. And Jesus saying, Rod, I want all these sufferings in your life. Just like a Joseph in slavery in Egypt or something. But I can comfort you. They don't have to bother you. I can make you happy in it. And I can work good out of them for you. I gotta live in an evil suffering world. But God can help me through it, bring good out of it for me, make me happy in it, and help me not be bothered by it. This war with Satan is, you believe his lies, he gets control of you. If you believe God's truth, you get free from Satan. Our conscious mind can only think about certain things at once. If it believes in lies, truth leaves. If it believes in truth, lies leave. It's 
good to meditate on the truth. Keep it in your mind. God is real. God loves me. God forgives me. God can help me. God can make me happy. And God's presence is a fullness of joy. Come into God's presence through the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Type stuff. This is the only thing that's going to get us through the trouble ahead. The tribulation ahead. Jesus controls the tribulation. Jesus is a thousand times more loving than the most loving mother on earth. Jesus is a thousand times more powerful than Satan. We gotta believe that. Jesus with us isn't some kind of weak thing. We got a weak guy that we gotta help out, like an old security guard that falls asleep all the time. <laughs> he never sleeps. He's looking at me, counting my hair, when I'm sleeping in bed or something. Satan is terrified of Jesus with us. And we don't have to fear Satan or people or whatever. If Jesus is telling us to do it, he can give us the power to do it. Jesus wants me to walk across a yard with dogs in it. I can do it. He can make me invisible if he wants to. I'm not going to fail with Jesus. I always win with Jesus. So, it doesn't matter how bad these things get, World War Three plagues in the future, you got the super god with you, living inside you. You're best friends with the king of the universe, and he controls it all. That's how you have to feel if you ever want to feel fullness of joy or perfect peace with God. You couldn't trust God unless he was in full control of everything at all times. He is. He spoke a word and the world was created. Our faith pleases God. So it's like Peter trying to learn how to have faith in Jesus. You got these disciples, they're seeing miracles every day, and still they can't believe that he's really God or something. Peter, get out of the boat and walk. Well, I can't do it myself, Jesus. Well, trust in me to help you. Trying to build faith in God's supernatural, miraculous power, not in your limited ability. God's not limited. If he tells you to do something, you can do it. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. What do you want to do now, Jesus? Okay, let's do it. You feel tired. Jesus can give you the strength to do things. It's like I'm trying to create my apartment into something like uh, a pleasant place to live if you get quarantined or something. I call it Rod's Resort. And this is a picture that I hung up in my kitchen here. And uh, you got to believe you're not alone. I'm not alone in my apartment. I got Jesus, King of the Universe here. If I get tired, he can give me strength. If I don't know something, he can give me wisdom. But he's not going to force us to listen to his voice or learn his truth or do his will or trust in him. We got to choose to. So as you read the Bible, you see. People get in difficult circumstances, needing to trust in God, have faith in God to get through them. And if they choose to do that, then he can take them to heaven, God's resort in heaven after they die. So I'm trying to build Rod's resort with Jesus helping me now. Food, some good entertainments or something like that. In case I get quarantined for a while. And just party with Jesus wherever you are. Lion's dead, fiery furnace, quarantine in a plague or something. If it's happening, Jesus wants it to happen, just like 9-11. Jesus controlled it. Plague today, Jesus controls it. World War III, if it comes, Jesus controls it. It's like a vision I had. I'm sitting with Jesus on a park bench, and I'm asking them the question, what does the future look like, Jesus? And he says to me, economic collapse, which could be coming soon. He said stuff like uh, rioting, apostasy, World War Three. 
famine. I don't think he said plague at the time. That was a couple of years ago. And I look at Jesus and I say, that doesn't sound like too good of a future. And then it goes into this vision of me dancing with Jesus around World War III. It's like people are getting shot in the streets and tanks and everything. And I'm dancing with Jesus around it. And I looked at Jesus and he looks at me and he says, don't let it bother you, Rod. I control this. I control this. Just because it's chaotic doesn't mean Jesus ain't in control of everything. He plans it out before we're even born. He's right there to help us through it. He's got a good plan for us in Wicked Land now if we'll listen to him and try to do it with his power to do it. So that's what we need to do and try to teach others is to trust in God like we trust in God. And don't trust in ourselves like we are trying not to trust in ourselves. And to need to try to teach other people how to trust in God, not you. So that's a bit about it. Trust in God, not you.